Silicon Valley, we are so ready to head back to Barcelona for another great Cisco Live Europe. And today's Cisco chat is super special. We have some great special guests. First, let's find out who else is here from Team DevNet. So let's go to Europe and hear from Julio. Hello, everyone. My name is Julio Gomez, and I lead programmability for Cisco in the EMER region. Let's go to the UK. Stuart, are you there? Thanks, Julia. Hey, this is Stuart Clark from Cisco, uh, Cisco DevNet. I'm the developer advocate here with the Cisco partners and our great friends, Natalik. Glad to introduce you all to Matthias. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, hi, I'm Matthias Prokop. I'm the principal architect in Natalik, and I'm here with Hayley uh, and Darren. Hi, everyone. I'm Hayley Knott, and I'm a marketing manager here at Natalik. Um, hi, I'm Darren Parkinson. I'm CDO here at Natalik, and I think it's over to you, Chuck. Hi, thanks everyone. Chuck Stickney, I'm the business development uh, manager for our DevNet partner ecosystem. Sylvia, off to you. We're going to send it right back to you, Chuck, because um, I know you've been working really hard on the new DevNet specialization for Cisco partners, but maybe we haven't let everyone else know about it yet. So before we go to Cisco Live Europe, before we go to the DevNet zone, let's make sure everyone knows what is the DevNet specialization for Cisco partners. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sylvia. This is a program that we're very excited about. We announced it at our Cisco Partner Summit back in November, but we're launching what we call our DevNet Partner Specialization Program, which is a which is a program meant to recognize our partner community that has focused on software programmability. So the, the ability to give them a badge that says, yes, I'm a partner that uh, we, we have developed a DevNet practice, we understand APIs and software automation, and we're looking to leverage those techniques and those skills and capabilities to solve customer business challenges, not unlike some of the solutions that that you're going to hear from our friends at Natilic and some of the journey that they've gone down to, to deliver themselves towards programmability. But with the specialization program, we're launching a formal project or a formal program to recognize our, gro our growing and, and global partner ecosystem that participates in software and programmability. Well, thank you for that you know, update for anyone who hasn't heard about the specialization yet. But you know what I want to do is start this conversation with Darren because Darren is a familiar face. If you've been to the VTs here in, at headquarters, you, you've seen Darren, and now we see him working with DevNet. So Darren, how does a longtime partner like you get involved with DevNet, and what exactly are you doing? Uh, thanks, Sylvia. Yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's, been a, it's been quite a long journey. So it started about uh, 15 years ago, I suppose, when we switched to Cisco as our main uh, strategic partner. Um, so we've got a long history developing alongside Cisco technology. So back then, of course, it was uh, the collaboration technology uh, and the contact center technology. So that's uh, more recently obviously expanded into um, programmability around all of the data center, enterprise networking and security platforms as well. Um, and so we're, we're very familiar with delivering these solutions um, for specific outcomes to our clients. Uh, across all of the Cisco portfolio and obviously when uh, Susie and the gang obviously turned Avid as it was back then if you remember that uh, into DevNet uh, of course there's been a, a huge explosion now in, in uh, all of the programmability of all the different platforms that everybody's doing and uh, and so we, we, um, we've seen a, a great deal of, uh, of interest from all of the different teams across Natilic um, and I've been lucky enough to attend, as you mentioned, a lot of partner VTs, um, hoping to go along to DevNet Create uh, in March, I think that is. So uh, really looking forward to that. But um, so what we did more recently was actually we sort of consolidated a lot of our different uh, programmability teams into this single programmability practice uh, across all the different technologies. And actually, that's where we tend to have most fun, actually, is just joining all these different technologies together and using the different APIs from all the different platforms. Um, and we turn that into, into a, a single program of practice so that we're getting best practice across all those different teams. Um, and we're working with our infrastructure team as well to, to sort of work on our DevOps practices as well. So that's Adam Bonney, who's our CTO uh, and his team. Um, and of course, we've got a lot of great talent here across all those different technologies here at Natilic. So we're always keen to, uh, to develop and retain the best people in the industry, of course, uh, as, as a lot of people would be. Uh, and so we are obviously very keen to try and give those opportunities to, to our existing people as well as sort of bringing on new people as well. So, and just making sure we're giving everybody those opportunities. Uh, and I think something that helps uh, with that, of course, is DevNet Express. So, you know, we've been very familiar with DevNet Express. I attended my first DevNet Express a long time ago. And um, 
Uh, and when um, I was having a conversation actually with Pedro uh, from the DevNet team, and he was sort of saying, we were just talking about some APIs, and he said, would you be interested in running your own DevNet Express? And I almost bit his arm off and said, yeah, absolutely, we'd totally be interested in doing that. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, at the same time, little did I know that, uh, that Stuart here from, from DevNet was, uh, was having a com similar conversation uh, actually with Matthias. So, um, uh, and so we sort of got together and we, then we involved Hayley from the marketing side. Uh, and then the rest is history, you know, pleased to say that we're, we're going to be um, presenting our sort of third DevNet Express in February, is that right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, pretty excited about that. So I guess it'll probably be a good time to hand over to Matthias just to, to maybe give, uh, give us his perspective on, uh, on things as well. Thank you, Darren. Yeah, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm coming from a little bit different direction. Uh, I've been always working mainly in the networking. Uh, I've been in networking for about 16 years. Uh, and coming mainly from the Linux background, um, which you know was the first time I actually started to using the Python as well and having a more of the like a programming uh, approach to the to the networks. Uh, I got introduced to my first like uh, Cisco gear uh, only 20, 12 years ago. Uh, I've been working with all the legacy uh, devices. If someone remember like Pix and Ace. Uh, and uh, trying to already you know scripting with these devices uh, at that time. Which was a little bit painful. Uh, we were using, you know, tools like Expect, for instance. Some of you maybe remember how painful it is <laughs> to, to use those. Um, and uh, properly starting to working for the Cisco partner, uh, it's been only three years ago when I started working in Natalik, uh, when I joined as the Z data, data Sunny Enterprise Practice Lead here. Uh, at that time, we had a very small enterprise practice and almost no data center practice. Uh, and uh, we, you know, when, when I came, we always wanted to build something special in here, uh, something very different from the other partners in terms of the data center the enterprise. Uh, that's why we started to building our practices uh, with, the, with the SDN uh, software defined networks in its core. Uh, we were, for instance, the first big tall partner uh, in Europe that was before the acquisition by Cisco. Uh, and we've done one of the first uh, ACI SDA deployments uh, here in Europe and in the UK. And really, the programmability and the APIs were always uh, the important part of our SDN proposition and, you know, very important topic which we were discussing with our clients and how we were talking about, about this stuff to our clients. Um, and it was one of the reasons why we started to engage more closely with DevNet team. Um, I think we've met with Stuart on multiple occasions um, about a year ago or more than a year ago uh, on one of the Cisco partners meetings. Uh, and then we've made uh, then then we've met on some earlier occasions uh, like the London Network meetups, which uh, we actually found out we knew uh, one of our friends uh, who helped me to organize those uh, here in London. So after some discussion with Stuart, uh, as as Darren already mentioned, with Petro and Roger, uh, we got this amazing offer to organize uh, first DevNet Express, uh, and it was you know it was luckily also the uh, data center DevNet Express. <laughs> Uh, which was almost a year ago, I think it was around in March uh, last year, I think roughly, yeah. Uh, and it was a big success. Uh, you know, everyone's loved it. Uh, we had a big audience. Uh, we were oversubscribed and uh, everyone really enjoyed the whole day. Um, so, you know, working closer with the DevNet team allowed us to participate in other events uh, like Cisco Live, uh, DevNet Grid, which Darren mentioned, uh, we've, we've presented last year on the Cisco Live also and the DevNet Grid. Uh, we will be doing the same this year, uh, which is a great opportunity for us to, to you know, present Nazi Lake and, and talk to the community, a uh, wider community, um, which is another thing, you know, how DevNet works us internally is to sort of helping and engaging our engineers' internal resources to more communicate and share the ideas, uh, which, which is great, you know, which is exactly what uh, we wanted to always do uh, since I joined. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of our DevNet team, uh, which we established over the last year. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, with Darren, Haley, Petro, Roger and Stuart, um, we will do, you know, some other great, amazing things, with, you know, even better than what we've done in the past year. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, my nice, you know, uh, summary about, uh, about the DevNet and our engagement. And I, I have to tell you, and you probably already know this, the UK team is exemplary, the team that Shantan Patel has built there and the collaboration, especially with the partner community and uh, with university, the university community as well, is exemplary. But look out, because Latin America is building a similar program. So, um, you know, that's good, having some global competition. Now, I have a question ready for Chuck. 
And we're still going to ask that question, but we are getting questions um, because we're live on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and on Cisco.com. Hello, everybody. Um, so one question that came in from Maxime on YouTube is, what is the point of becoming a Cisco partner? So Chuck, on top of the question that you knew I was going to ask you about Natilic's good example and how partners can follow that example, I'd like you to answer first, what is the point of becoming a Cisco partner? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So in general, uh, in, in the marketplace, Cisco in the networking space is obviously recognized as a world leader. So partners wanting to participate in the Cisco partner ecosystem help to drive uh, their business practice and their business relevance based on the technology that, that Cisco brings to the market to, to solve customer challenges. If I focus that question more towards software, as far as what is the benefit of a partner being a Cisco uh, DevNet partner, Really what that's about is being able to recognize how to solve business challenges, leveraging programmability on top of Cisco platforms that are in use by the majority of, of, of the world's customers today. So that really, let, let's say I'm a software practice that is kind of uh, aware of Cisco, but not really sure why Cisco is important to me. As I look to leverage the power of API programmability and to be able to leverage a network infrastructure to be able to solve additional business challenges, Having an understanding and having a relationship with Cisco, which is what those customers are using today, gives that partner a, a good foundation to build their practice upon that they know they're targeting towards uh, what, custom, what, what type of equipment and what types of services are in place at the customers that they hope to help. Well, that sounds, um, you know, it's, Cisco's a big company, and um, if you want to get started, no matter what, where you are in your business cycle, development cycle. You can reach out to people like Chuck. You can also reach out to people like Stuart, our friend Big Evil Beard, who's not so evil. Uh, he's a Cisco DevNet developer advocate. And I'd like you, Stuart, to tell us more about how people can get in touch with you. I mean, you've done something great here with Natilic, but tell us more about how people can reach out to you. Thanks, Sylvia. I'm a big advocate of, of networking as well. I connect with a lot of people in di various different manners. You know, with StepNet is very, very active throughout all the social channels. And as, as Sylvia said, and, you know, I have, have the TechNet big evil bid, and I think I've got that for a good reason now. <laughs> um, but what's really interesting is with the whole sort of relationship, how we built this with Intellic, it was, it was a chance meeting that I had with Mattis when I was in a, a Cisco event in Amsterdam. And right from the beginning, when we started that initial conversation, you could really sort of see the synergy building between, um, you know, DevNet and, and, and the Tillich. And we followed that up when we came both back into the UK. And I got the chance to walk um, Matthews through sort of like, you know, all the content that DevNet has to offer. And this was uh, some of the stuff that I presented at the uh, showcase in Amsterdam. And this was the, the DevNet Learning Labs um, code exchange and automation exchange where people can go and get started with all that their pieces of code and get up and running and really get into that developer ethos and build up their skills. And communicating with our, our audience out there and our, dev, our DevNet community, they really want to see more of this content. So we try to bring the best content that we can to them. And we're always listening to what they want and taking that feedback and developing it into Cisco content for, that, for them to, to learn all of these things. So it's really, really important to to us to have that, that great content out there for people to consume and learn and move their careers forward with everything that we that we have on DevNet. And obviously we've mentioned before, one of the ways that they can do that is by attending a, a, a DevNet Express. And it was a really great opportunity to actually have the first partner-led DevNet Express in UKI with Natlik. And it was something that you know, Darren and Mattis has mentioned before, how we brought this whole thing together. And attending that and feeling the energy in the room when we first went there was absolutely amazing to see everybody sort of heads down and getting on and learning together and pairing up and stuff and doing partner programming and working through all the, all the material that we have on the DevNet Express thing. So it's really great to see. Um, Hayley, what did you think about the DevNet Express? Yeah, so um, for us, obviously, at Natidic, um, running events is something which we do quite often. We find it's a really successful way to engage with our clients and, and our prospect clients as well. And it's also an opportunity to bring the expertise we have in-house, whether that be from um, an engineering perspective, a developer perspective, and really kind of give the platform for us to, to knowledge share back with people. So, you know, we feel that we're actually uh, like contributing to the community and engaging with them in a kind of 
pull him back. Um, so yeah, when obviously like the guys have said, I was we were all so excited and I was kind of like jumping up and down the fact that we definitely want to run, want to run like a Devon Express event. And it, there was a real mix within the audience. So there was quite a few of our clients who were contemplating um, making brand new investments into Cisco and the event gave them the opportunity to get a little bit more hands-on to see where that kind of extra like return on investment could lie if they're going to make this big investment um, and also there were clients who had already like paid out and, and they already sat with a really like strong Cisco infrastructure mm. and it was for them to have the opportunity to really understand and open their eyes to the opportunity of adding that layer of programmability and automation on top where they can start um, kind of pushing what they were doing and, and realizing the benefits of, of how to like galvanize uh, the Cisco infrastructure that they had. And it was only really like after the first event we ran and the feedback we got from the clients and everybody in the room, like, like Stu said, there was so much energy and everyone was sharing, they were asking questions, they were like, do you find this, do you have these challenges? And there was such a buzz and it was great for us to see that you, know, you know, with the help of DevNet, through the DevNet Express events and talking to our clients and engaging in a completely different approach and manner, we were able to, to confidently guide them in, in their DevOps practices and, and building their like, DevOps um, approaches and strategies moving forward. Um, we you know, we have now yeah we like Matthew said we've run two events now one on uh, the data center and one on uh, um, DNA and we're obviously going to be out in Barcelona um, with this, the DevNet with Omaraki before Cisco Live and then yeah we, we're planning a couple more as well so watch this space I think the next one is in February 25th 26th and you can feel free to sign up if you're in London on the Cisco DevNet website where all the events are listed. Um, and yeah, it should be a really good couple of days. And what I really like about your story is that you've done DevNet Express tracks, you've done different tracks. So, um, you know, it's a great example. And of course, you know, some partners specialize in some technology and, and that's fine, but you're a really good example of um, really going through the different technologies. Um, and we've talked about DevNet Express so much. It is a great way for partners to get started with DevNet. So um, we're going back to Barcelona the weekend before Cisco Live Europe. Um, you know, there's a sold out event. I'm so glad I, you know, get to be invited to, to help work there because, you know, it's been sold out for a while now. I think one of the success, um, the secrets to the success of this event, though, is that there's a nice coffee shop right next to it. So you get coffee, you get cookies all day long. You know, it's, it's just really fun. But to talk about the business part of it, let's go to Julio, who will tell us, you know, how many um, times we've done this in Barcelona and everything else he's working on programmability related in Emir. Julio? Yeah, so yeah, you're definitely right. We are coming back to Barcelona, hopefully sunny Barcelona, hopefully the weather is as nice as usual. So yeah, we are back to with our classic, uh, already classic annual pre-Cisco Live Europe, or uh, you know, this time in Barcelona, but no matter what's the city, we always do this DevNet Express on the weekend before Cisco Live. And honestly, I still remember the first times that we were running this kind of event, just being so concerned about how many people is going to show up for an event happening on the weekend? Because we have full days on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And since we started, we've always had the most successful events completely sold out. And in fact, I think they are the biggest DevNet Express events that we are running worldwide. So um, yeah, it's, it's really a fantastic success. Uh, this year, we are running it on January the 25th and 26th, just before Cisco Live. And this time, the DevNet Express is going to be focused on the Meraki APIs. We have a brand new DevNet Express track that we just published with brand new content, just talking about all things Meraki APIs. The great thing about the DevNet Express is that it allows people attending it to start from scratch. Like, okay, I don't know anything about, you know, how to get, how to work with APIs, how to work with Meraki APIs or with any other APIs. I don't know Python. I don't know anything. How can I get started? Well, the Meraki DevNet Express is going to get all our attendees started from scratch. We expect to have uh, around 100 attendees for the event coming from different EMER partners and EMER customers as well. 
And we'll be covering, um, as I said, everything from Stripe, but also specifically for Meraki, we'll be talking about the Meraki dashboard APIs so that you can build your own solutions based on those. We'll be talking about monitoring and analytics for Meraki. And we'll be also be talking about the external captive, captive portal. So um, our goal is that all attendees going out of the event, they are ready to start working on automating any kind of Meraki related workflows, so automation, but also on innovation, on creating new stuff that did not exist before so that they can address their specific requirements for a use case, for a, from a specific customer or whatever they need to do. But they will get all the tools that they need so that out of the event, they can get started and monetizing this specific Meraki, this, these specific APIs. That's fantastic. Um, I believe we did the first uh, Meraki DevNet Express before Cisco Live US in San Diego. And, you know, of course, it's the more people that find out about it and also geography, you know, wise, if you want to find out about a DevNet Express near you, go to uh, developer.cisco.com slash events. And, uh, you know, or you can just ask, ask your account manager, ask your friends at DevNet um, if you want to, you know, be part of a DevNet Express. Now, um, if you want to host a DevNet Express, I think Chuck, if we could go back to you and get some clarity on, you know, what's the difference between attending and, and hosting, if you could give us some clarity on that. Yeah, absolutely, Sylvia. So DevNet Expresses are a fantastic method that we use as kind of instructor-led training to, to get folks to, to learn what DevNet is, learn what programmability is, and get some hands-on experience in a... Uh, in a um, in a proctored fashion, so you'll have experts like Stuart that are there to to help guide you and, and to work you along the way. Initially, we started those as kind of internal only focus to get a, get our internal folks, and then we started to do Cisco hosted Cisco sponsored events for uh, for for partners and customers that are there. As we went down that process, and as Natilik has, has demonstrated, we started to have them kind of host it, where we would have Cisco uh, individuals there that would help uh, work on the content and help uh, provide the, the, the mechanisms and such. But we would host that at a partner to highlight what was going on with that. And DevNet, and DevNet is very willing to do that for partners. And Natilik has, has definitely uh, demonstrated how successful that can be for their business. As we relate to the specialization program that we're talking about, what we're intending to do with our specialization program is to allow specialized partners to also be able to entirely host and lead those those DevNet Express events on their own. So we're still building out the mechanisms to do so, but our expectation is that for a DevNet certified partner, without any involvement from Cisco other than giving them the guidance and some of the materials necessary to host that, we'll let those partners kind of go off on their own and not have to worry about having a Cisco resource there to facilitate it. So several different levels of DevNet Express uh, that are coming up, and we're definitely adding more capabilities to that inside of our specialization program. Thank you, that makes, that makes sense. I hope it's clear for everyone. We are taking questions, um, and a question we just got on Facebook is, what's the difference between DevNet certifications and the newly launched Cisco certifications? So let's go to someone who I know has been working on these. Let's go to Stuart. Stuart, um, tell us about what you see and, and what you know about the difference between DevNet certifications and the updated Cisco certification. Thanks, Sylvia. The traditional certifications, as people have known, has been traditionally around sort of routing and switching and then the specializations into things like data center and security. And what the DevNet certifications do is they add that bolstered layer of programmability on top of the traditional um, RNS. And this is the way that the whole industry is shifting. The DevNet, uh, DevNet certifications are the certifications that are going to lead your career into the future. These are the things that employees are going to be looking about and the skills that you will need to, to you know, prolong your career and move your career into that direction of programmability, which the world is now seeing. Mm -hmm. APIs are now a lot more familiar. It's not um, not a buzzword anymore, and everybody understands what the acronym means. And more and more people are, are using them pretty much every day in their daily workflows to do programmability, which is anything from getting information from devices to actually configuring those and completing a whole sort of CI/CD workflow journey and the DevNet certifications take you through that entire process. As we know, there's 10 DevNet certifications in all. There's the DevNet Associate and then there's the DevNet Core and then that will take you to eight uh, specialist certifications including um, service provider, enterprise, collaboration, DevOps. There's a whole range of certifications 
whatever your trajectory and whatever your journey is that you want to take. So um, a follow-up question uh, would be, what is Natilic working on this year? And you know, with everything we've heard about DevNet Express and certification specialization. So um, Haley, what, what else do you have in store for us this year? Okay, well, to be fair, like 2020 is kind of like our, our kind of like DevNet DevOps year for us here at Natilic. Um, we will be kind of take, bringing our team to you know, look at the specialization and certifications. It's something which is very high on our priority list. And as well, we want to just keep building the community. So uh, I think we were like one of the first partners in the UK and I to contribute to the code exchange. Uh, one of our, our like top level engineers wrote a piece of code and contributed to that. And we just want to encourage that kind of relationship and build upon uh, what we've been doing and just really be an active member of the community. Mm -hmm. So it's not just hosting the events and, and getting like the stamps and seals, it's actually being proactive and also giving our, um, our team here at Natilic, giving them time to go off and learn and develop. And you know, as Darren said, you know, we have been internally adding this like uh, level of innovation on top of the Cisco infrastructure for years now. But being able to give our people the breathing space to, to work on things which impact us as a business as well as our clients is one thing which we're looking at doing as well. And before people start thinking about certification, specialization, um, you know, we get a lot of questions about which track to take, what technology should I focus on. So I'd love to go back to Julio because I know he's hosted a lot of different tracks of DevNet Express, and he, you know, he is the uh, programmability lead for Amir. So, what guidance would you give to someone who hasn't specialized and who hasn't chosen a track, Julio? Uh, I would say uh, it depends on, on the specific business that you are working with. I mean, if, if at your company you are responsible, like Matthias, for example, was mentioning data center before. If you're responsible for data center, I would definitely encourage you to start taking a look at the data center infrastructure part or the compute part and really get focused on you know, a specific solution that is relevant for your customer. At the end of the day, uh, there are so many commonalities in between the different tracks, like how you need to know about the programming fundamentals, how you need to know about Python. REST APIs are common for everything, so you really need to get started somewhere, and there are a lot of things that will be common to, no matter where you focus later on, that will be common for all of those. So I would just say, okay, let's start somewhere. If you are a data center guy, if you are a collaboration guy, if you are a person focused on Meraki, just go with that and you will later um, um, realize that most of what you have already learned, you can leverage and reuse it for whatever other architectures you want to focus in the future. Great, no, that's, that's great feedback, especially from someone who's been so successful. So thank you so much for, for helping us with that. If you are in doubt, if you still want to do more uh, before you commit to any specific technology, you can go to DevNet Express. We get a lot of questions about that, developer.cisco.com slash events, and you'll know which events are coming um, near you. And um, we also have our own DevNet conference, DevNet Create, coming up in March. And if you, you know, um, if you would like to go, the, the pricing is really the best time to, to, to get the tickets is now because we have early bird pricing. So go to developer.cisco.com slash DevNet Create, and you get all the information there. So you get to come to Silicon Valley and hang out with everyone in Team DevNet. Um, Stuart and I will be the ones having coffee, but check it out, DevNet Create. And um, also, uh, we want to you know, make sure that you keep asking questions. We, you know, all of us, men and women, the social media channels, and we're always here to help you. So you know, don't be afraid. If you want to get started, go to developer.cisco.com slash start now. So any other comments from any of our participants? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think from our side, it's just um, a massive thank you, like um, working with, with the DevNet team over here in the UK and I, and, and with you guys over in, in the States has, has been absolutely phenomenal. And everyone's been so supportive and really, uh, collaborative in what we've seen as a vision of what we want to do and bring to our clients. So we think you're doing a great job and, and we'll be out in, in at Cisco Live probably lurking around the DevNet, DevNet zone. Yeah. So, and, and Matthias is, is on stage speaking with uh, Mandy and Susie a couple of months. So yeah, just like you say, reach out, have a chat with us. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, w I would only add to you know I I highly recommend to be you know to to join the community. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's very beneficial for you in terms of upskilling you know learning new stuff. Uh, I've been in networking for a while, and this is a really exciting area right now. So uh, I can only highly recommend to join the DevNet community, and I'm looking forward to meet anyone uh, who would be interested to speak to me uh, in the DevNet area, I'm a Cisco Life in Barcelona. Yeah, and I think with Cisco releasing new exams as well around DevNet, I think that's a it's a huge opportunity for everybody to to just get on board on with those tracks and and just uh, and just get going with it. So yeah, it's really exciting. I know we've got a lot of buzz here about it, and uh, lots of people are really excited about doing those. So. So thanks for, for sort of bringing on, bringing on those exams. Yeah, that, that, that's great. And Sylvia, what I would add to that is, you know, as you mentioned, you know, uh, developer.cisco.com, that is our portal to Matthias Point. Uh, if you're not already a member, just developer.cisco.com and you can join up there and you get access to all of the tools and resources that we have. For those who are not able to attend uh, Julio's uh, DevNet Express event before uh, the Barcelona event, uh, slash start now that gives you all the resources all the training resources we have uh, development guides we have learning maps and journeys that you can use to get yourselves up to speed and exactly to the point of the new DevNet career certifications we have for that you can start to begin learning towards those uh, with the free resources that we have on developer.cisco.com so that's a great resource for you to skill up to validate your skills and to to get exposure and experience with different areas of technology that you may not have um, and, and those certifications do go live on February 24th. So uh, for those of you who can come to Barcelona, visit the DevNet Zone, work with us uh, on site. We have workshops, we have access to labs, and you have access to resources like Stuart, who can definitely help you learn all the things you need to do to be ready for those exams. And then on Febu February 24th, you can be one of the first people in the world to be DevNet certified. And then if you're coming as a partner, developer.cisco.com slash partner, that's where we release all of our information related to the partner specialization program. And then when that launches in mid 2020, so in, in the in the middle of the year here, you could be one of the first partner community or partner organizations to have that DevNet cert certification and specialization and place yourself much higher in the market to be able to help solve customer program or customer challenges, leveraging software automation and programmability. Great, so what a start to the year. Uh, thank you everyone for, for joining us today on the first Cisco DevNet hosted Cisco chat of the year. Try saying that 10 times, Cisco DevNet hosted Cisco chat. Uh, the next Cisco DevNet hosted Cisco chat will be at the end of February and it will be live from Melbourne. But before we get to Melbourne, let's go to Barcelona. If you can join us in the DevNet zone at the DevNet Express, that would be great. And if you wish you could join us, but you, know, you just can't get to where we're having events, even DevNet Create um, later in March, Reach out, we're here to help you. Thank you so much. Bye.